Hello, this is Builder Elephant, and welcome back to another LEGO review. Today, we'll be looking at the LEGO Disney Minifigures Series 2, 71024. This set came out in 2019, has 18 minifigures, and was designed for people 5 and up. When the first series of LEGO Disney minifigures came out in 2016, they were an instant hit. LEGO and Disney collectors fell in love and bought these blind bags up. LEGO had to produce another batch to keep up with demand. Ever since then, people have been expecting and speculating on what characters would make it into the second series. After three years of waiting, LEGO fans were treated with 18 new Disney minifigures. Like most of the first series, these figures were paired up with matching characters. It's no surprise the first two characters would be Mickey and Minnie Mouse. As the face of Disney, it's hard to have a Disney series without this famous mouse. For the second round, LEGO made them vintage. They were based on the 1928 Steamboat Willie cartoon. The use of black and white and gray to replicate the old black and white cartoons was amazingly done. However, these are by far my least favorite characters in the series, because the month before, LEGO released almost the exact same figures in the Steamboat Willie set 21317. While the coloring was significantly different, the changes were so subtle that there was nothing unique to make them collectible minifigures. Huey, Dewey, and Louie were chosen for the next group. I think this choice was made because Disney had recently rebooted DuckTales. My suspicion was reaffirmed when LEGO also included Scrooge McDuck. All four of these characters are a great addition to the LEGO Disney minifigure collection. Not only because I was a huge fan of DuckTales in 1987, but all four of these characters have never been made into minifigures before and are a major part of Mickey's history. Donald Duck's nephews have been around since 1937, and Scrooge McDuck came along in 1947. Huey, Dewey, and Louie were the exact same molds, but painted differently. While this might seem lazy, the characters themselves originally wore identical outfits with no defining color scheme. It took almost 40 years before each character was given an established color. Huey now wears red, Dewey is in blue, and Louie likes green. These boys were given the non-bendable kid legs, standard torso pieces, and a rubbery duck tail. Their head molds are shaped differently than the other ducks and are smaller. While the characters were the same, they each got a different accessory. It was these accessories that let people know which nephew was in the blind bags. Louie was given a flashlight to explore those dark caves, and Dewey had a slingshot. While these accessories are common, Huey was given the most character-driven piece. The bright green book he is holding has the Junior Woodchucks of the World emblem on it. This is a scouting organization Huey, Dewey, and Louie belong to, and one of the things that helped change them from troublemakers to mostly responsible kids. Inside the book, there is a 1x2 tile with the writing and a compass printed on it. A nice reference to the treasure hunts the boys go on with their great uncle Scrooge and DuckTales. Woo! -hoo. Scrooge was also given a new head mold to include his side feathers and those pince knees glasses. The rest of his body reused the same pieces found with Donald and Daisy, except his had the fancy blue frock coat and red gaiters on his feet. To complete the outfit, he was given a large black top hat. While his walking stick accessory needs no explanation, the new printed one by one round tile piece deserves a closer look. This 10 cent piece is actually Scrooge McDuck's number one dime. The 1875 Seated Liberty Dime was the first coin he ever earned and has been part of his storyline since 1953. We were lucky enough to get more long-term cast members with Chip and Dale. These brothers first appeared in 1943, which lends legitimacy to them being named after the famous 18th century cabinet maker and furniture designer Thomas Chippendale and not the Chippendale dancers that came out in 1979. Chip and Dale were given the newer bendable kid legs. While their legs and torso are the exact same molds, Lego used dark brown for Chip and light brown for Dale. They both have the exact same tails printed on the back. Lego did give them unique head molds. While Chip has centered teeth and a small black chocolate chip sized nose, that's a little hint on how to tell them apart, Dale has the big red clown nose and buck teeth. The other big difference comes on the top of their heads. Chip, the more sensible and logical chipmunk, has a nice smooth head. Dale, and his dim-witted and impulsive character, doesn't take as good care of himself and has unkept hair on top. A new root vegetable with stud on top was used to create an acorn for Chip to hold. 
Dale got the whole bag of acorns with a Santa Claus sack. The princesses of Arendelle, Elsa and Anna, were the next characters to be included in the second series, and moves us away from the classic Mickey and Friends characters. To be honest, I was shocked when these sisters were not included in the first series, so it was no surprise that Lego did include them in the second round of blind bags, especially with the Frozen sequel coming out at the end of the year. I am very happy that we get these characters in minifigure form, because there have been a lot of sets with them as dolls. Elsa was given her blue ice dress. While the details on her dress are nice, it's her cape and shiny snowflakes on it that really stand out. Anna has the outfit she picked up at the Wandering Oaken's trading post. This dress has amazing detail in its printing. Those flowers on the torso are so well done. Once again, the cape shines. She was given a new design cape piece that allowed the fabric to cover her shoulders when the head and hair piece are in place. Both sisters were given new soft hair pieces to match their unique style. While both have smiles on their faces to fit their different personalities, it's their second expression of winking at each other with opposite eyes that not only helps connect the minifigures, but also shows us that sisterly bond that was able to save Elsa, Anna, and all of Arendelle. The large snowflake and lantern accessories are nice, but don't catch your attention as much as the other pieces in the series. While there were a couple characters chosen to complement the figures from the first series, my favorite inclusion was Jafar and Jasmine. While Aladdin and Genie were amazing, it's always felt incomplete without Jasmine. Jasmine is one of the few princesses who was given legs instead of a dress piece. I like the change. Lego created a new hair piece for her as well, and that long braid in the back is so well articulated that it makes you appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into creating these pieces. While Jasmine's printing was well done, Jafar's was spectacular. Unlike Jasmine, who only got one facial expression, Jafar had two, and both captured his ego-driven, wicked personality. While the dress, dual-colored cape, and shoulder pads all looked amazing, his unique hat is by far my favorite piece in this entire series. I always like getting animal creature pieces in my sets in order to grow my animal collection, so I'm a big fan of Jasmine's dove accessory. Jafar's Pharaoh Staff snake is nothing new, but a perfect fit to his magic staff in the cartoon. While the 1997 Disney Hercules movie would have been nowhere near my top list of best Disney animated films to get characters, Hades and Hercules' design won me over. Lego did a great job matching the printing on Hercules to his animated appearance in the film. Lego outdid themselves with the new hair pieces in this series, and Hercules is yet another figure to get his own unique hair piece. It was Hades that blew my mind. His tentacle feet are not only unique, but open up a lot of ideas for people looking to create some custom minifigures. His headpiece is the same one found on Ghost Rider, but it uses a translucent blue flame, making it stand out as something unique and different. Hercules won the accessory contest with that Greek short sword and shield with Zeus's lightning bolt on it. Hades' simple flame pieces worked well, but we've seen them so much that they're not as impressive as the figure itself. The Nightmare Before Christmas characters were by far the biggest surprise for me. I love this movie, but always thought it was too adult-oriented for a Lego theme. However, Brickheads gave me hope. While Sally and Jack were built from standard minifigure pieces, their printing shows how far these minifigures have come in terms of body printing. This is especially true with Sally's patchwork design. While Sally's hair may not stand out, it was a unique piece made just for her. In terms of pieces, it was Jack's bat bow tie that I loved the most. Sally's black flower accessory is built from common plant pieces, but the use of black is great for that haunted feel and something we don't see that often. Jack's present is a nicely detailed box, but it was the transparent round tile snowflakes that really make it special. The last two figures in the series are Edna Mode and Frozone. While the Mr. Incredible and Syndrome were some of my least favorite characters from the first series, because I felt they were more Pixar than Disney, however, I think that they were an excellent inclusion in the second series and made up for the gap in the LEGO Incredibles 2 theme in which Frozone and Edna were absent from any of the sets. I mean, Edna was available as a promotional minifigure for buying the LEGO Incredibles video game, but that was not available to everyone. With Edna's fashion sense, LEGO had a lot of outfits to choose from, and for this series, they chose something from the second movie. 
The short kid legs were a must for Edna's short stature. But I think Lego took a big risk with having her glasses printed onto the hairpiece, and this decision has really split people's opinion on whether they like it or not. Frozone's superhero suit is very basic in its design, so it was not challenging to recreate. Despite only having his mouth to work with, Lego managed to use it to capture that Frozone cool personality. Both incredible characters were loaded up with accessories. It's like Lego was apologizing for not including them in the Incredibles theme. Edna Mode had a teacup and a little tote bag with her name printed on a 1x2 tile piece. Frozone had an ice board and two ice blast pieces. Overall, I love this series. I would say that it's secured its number two spot in my favorite CMF series, just below Series 14 Monsters. While this was meant to be a general review of the overall series, you can find links to more detailed reviews for each figure in the description below. Feel free to check them out. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and you can click on the image to watch another video. Until next time, let's keep building together.